Hello, this is David Hale with Tech Dive TV. Welcome to episode 139 of Commercial Commentary. Today we're veering off the normal path of commercial commentary. Uh, we're not doing a product. We're doing a political rally. Yes, it's the political season and a lot of the candidates are having rallies. Well, what are rallies? They're basically just commercials for, them, for the different candidates. They're marketing themselves to the voting American people. Well, one of the people who are running for the GOP candidacy for president is Ted Cruz. Now, from recent posts online, I've been told that Ted Cruz only needs 133% of the remaining delegates to be able to get the nomination. That's impossible. But what has he done? He's picked a vice presidential running mate and he's not even anywhere close to being nominated to run for president. Well, this is ridiculous. But he has nominated Carly Fiorina, the failed CEO of HP, the failed presidential candidate, and now a vice presidential candidate. So let's go ahead and see how qualified Carly Fiorina is to become vice president or to run, to be able to run for vice president. And with that, I am pleased to introduce to you an extraordinary leader, my friend, and the next Vice President of the United States, Carly Fiorina. So, is Carly Fiorina really qualified to be Vice President of the United States? And Carly, what do you think of Ted Cruz? Ted is a lot of fun. Yes, let's face it, he's really brilliant. He's a constitutional attorney, for heaven's sake. So, Carly, he sounds brilliant. Does he have any flaws? You know, we were on the bus, and we were watching the... Final Four, we were watching the very last game, Villanova, North Carolina. Anyway, it's 4.38 seconds to go in the game. And without knowing what the exciting finish would be, here's Ted Cruz putting money on the game. Everybody's got the money falling in the table. So, Carly, not only are you unable to keep a secret, you'll throw your candidate and running mate under the bus at any point. Good to know. He is a man of character and conviction. And if he continues to gamble on basketball games, he may even have a conviction. And he understands the importance of the Constitution to the future of this nation. Carly, I think it's imperative that you explain the importance of the Constitution to your voters. And I have to take a moment and, un and explain why the Constitution even matters. Because, you know, there's some people who would say, well, it's a dusty relic. It was written so long ago. Let me tell you why it matters. But to tell you why it matters, I need to go back and tell you a little bit about myself. You have to tell us about yourself. Why? Did you have something when writing the Constitution? I tend to doubt it. My mother was my Sunday school teacher. And this has to do with the Constitution and its importance. How? And she looked at me and the rest of her class and she said, what you are is God's gift to you. What you make of yourself is your gift to God. Okay, I'm missing the constitutional point here. Perhaps you could talk about the Constitution itself. One day, go on and become the chief executive of what we turned into the largest technology company in the world. And then run it into the ground and get fired run for the President of the United States and fail at that and earn only one delegate in your entire campaign and run now for the Vice Presidency of the United States and if this doesn't work out you can always run for County Coroner in your local district that is only possible in this great nation and the reason it's possible the reason here and only here is because our founders knew what my mother taught me. 
How could our forefathers possibly know what your mother taught you? How old is your mother? And so they said, we're going to found a nation on a radical, visionary idea that here in this nation, everyone has the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Excuse me. Excuse me. That is not in the Constitution. You have just quoted the Declaration of Independence. You do know they're different documents, right? That was their way of saying everyone has the right to find and use their God-given gifts to fulfill their potential. And they said, and this was the radical part, that that right comes from God and cannot be taken away by man or government. Carly, you're paraphrasing. And the information that you're paraphrasing does not come from the Constitution either. It also comes from the Declaration of Independence. Remember, two separate documents, not the same thing. But our founders knew something else. Our founders knew that it has always been true all throughout history. And I used to study history. And you probably didn't get very good grades in history because you don't know what the Constitution is. And so the Constitution is rightly understood not just as a document to enshrine our rights and liberties, but also a document to prevent, to restrain the concentration and the abuse of power. Hey, you got something right about the Constitution. It does mean that. It's not a quote from it, though. Do you think you could probably quote a phrase or a sentence from the Constitution for us? That is why having a constitutional conservative in the White House matters. Yes, I agree. It's important to have someone who understands the Constitution in the White House. Do you think you could give me that quote now? Will we be one nation indivisible under God with liberty and justice for all? Carly, that was an out of order Pledge of Allegiance. I'm asking for the Constitution. But wait a minute, perhaps you can't handle that. Perhaps that document is too complex. To prove you're qualified to be Vice President of the United States, just do one simple thing. Sing the National Anthem. I know two girls that I just adore. I'm so happy I can see them more. Cause we travel on the bus all day, we get to play, we get to play.